The Dilemma You are great, you know. You are at the top of the world, the queens of Equestria. Then why are we in this bottomless piece of shit? We don't belong here. It's time coloratura, it's time. Rara is brushing her mane while her face looked at the mirror. The dressing room was full of important things for her, like a country guitar, some clothes, a radio, and two pictures. One with her former manager, Sven Gallup, taken before the concert in Ponyville some months ago, and one with Applejack, taken shortly after the concert. From behind was a leather couch and a framed poster from her old alter ego, Countess Coloratura, promoting the last hit, The Spectacle. Rara sighed, confused about the possible future of her career. She let the brush on the mirror desk and recharged her shoulders on the piece of furniture. A knock was heard on the door. Come in, she said. From the door appeared the designer, Coco Pomel. We're ready for your first theatrical trial. Rara stood up from the chair, heading to the main stage. It was Bridal Way, the same place where Henny in the Hills had been shown. Now, it was time for Rara to make her mark, moving away from the music industry for a moment, and trying in a foreign territory for her. A monologue, played by herself. Coco remained on the backstage. The, the entire place was empty, and at the front was no other than the Lord of Chaos himself, Discord, serving as director and producer for her mm. show. Although she didn't know about the Lord part, Pony Holograms were fulfilling the seats. Lights! The Chimera shouted and the lights from above illuminated the scenery and pointed at the singer. Audience! The Hologram's eyes began to glow. Action! Approaching the center and holding a sheet with said monologue, Rara began. Every pony's always quitting on me. My whole life. All the ponies I get to know. Quit. I never do. I'm loyal. I stay. But they all leave me. So with my daddy, suddenly one of the main lights fell to the stage. It crashed almost on Rara, but she managed to evade it. Astonished about the incident, she complained to Discord. What was that? Should have been an accident. How inconvenient. The Hulgrens vanished. Oh well, we now have to replace it with a brighter one. What? Rao was surprised for the wrong reasons. I said, no, no, no. A light almost landed on my head. And you're more worried about the object than my own health? Listen, my lady. Discord stood up from his seat and flew towards him. All I'm doing is making sure everything goes well. Everything has to be perfect. According to the plan, errors are not allowed. Coco ran to the stage to interfere between them to prevent a fighting. Stop! Both Rara and Discord focused on her for a moment, and the arguing ceased. Coco sighed, frustrated. The premiere's in three days. The posters for the promos are wrongly done. The costume isn't ready yet, and both of you have been complaining for the same issues all this time. <sighs> Could you please get along with each other for just a minute? The entire theater felt empty for a moment. Finally, Rara spoke. If you need me, I'll be in the dressing room. But you just arrived. I don't care. I have to order my thoughts right now. The singer retired. But as soon as she traveled through the corridor, she could hear the conversation between her dresser and producer. I'm losing my mind with that girl. But she's right. You care more about the details of the stage than what's in front of you. Maybe you're putting the money. But I've been with her for a while now. I'm not only her dresser, but a marketer as well. Why does that even matter? I've known her better for around three or four months. She has been delicate since I met her. Now there's no doubt she needs a specialist to control her mind. Mind? You mean she's got nuts? No. 
What I mean is that she needs to put herself together and order her ideas. I'll go and search for a doctor. Would you come with me? Discord sighed. If it's for her health, I'll do it. By the way, how long have you met her? Since yesterday. Rara finally got into the dressing room and closed the door. To clear her mind, she turned on the radio and sat down on the leather couch. It received the signal of an interview program. What she hadn't expected was who the announcer was interviewing. Welcome to the program, Writing on the Wall, where we explore the past, present, and future of the stars for three days. Here in our study, the famous pop artist Sapphire Shores. Let us know, with the release of your latest album, many critics have been praising your performance and your work. Your career has a new breath of air, and you're even nominated for the music awards of this year. How could you manage to be on the top once again? All I can say is, when you hit rock bottom, there's only one way to go. Come on, there has to be something else. You wouldn't tell me you became who you are by magic. Actually, yes. It's called effort, which is something most of the ponies nowadays lack. They think by, like you said, magic, dreams will come true. It's pretty clear they still live in a fantasy world. But everything was interrupted when the voice came back. Listen to her. That bitch is twice your age, doesn't even have half the talent, and yet she's more recognizable and gains more than you. Meanwhile, you're rotting in this second hoof dump trying to do something you're not capable of, and trying to prove something you're wrong about. I'm telling you this. There'll be no Applejack to save you from this. You're alone, and will always be alone. Leave me alone. Why? We've already had this conversation before. I said, LEAVE ME ALONE! She yelled at the top of her lungs. In her rampage, Rara grabbed the radio and threw it at the frame poster falling to the floor. The frame was ruined, and pieces of glass spread throughout the room. No, 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 no. Rara tried to fix it up. Some of the pieces got into her clothes, and when she tried to pull them out carefully, the dress cut ripped. I didn't mean it. Why did you do that? I love that photo. A knock on the door was heard again. Come in, she said. This time, the, the one who appeared was a blue-coated unicorn wearing a jacket, probably for the cold outside. Are you the famous singer, Coloratura? She asked, questioning the surrounding environment. Yes, but uh, please call me Rara. Sorry about the mess. Rara stretched her hoof for the her. Sure. The unicorn said as she lifted her head up to observe the room. I'm Minuet. Excuse me, but what are you doing here? Oh, Minuet said, looking through the place from top to bottom. Miss Pamel found one of my advertisements on the street and contacted me to watch out your health while you're here. Rara showed surprise. That must be quick. I mean, it's already difficult to hire some pony for a specific job. She was able to do it in minutes. Minutes, you say? Minua paused as she observed how Rara was suiting and pl putting in place the mess of the dressing room. Yes, I'm surprised Coco could do it. She's a very nice and trustful pony. Rara continued cleaning. Minua couldn't help but notice a pit poster on the floor. So, when do we start? Rara eyes joyfully, because I'm in a hurry right now. How about in this instant? Minuet asked. Rara nodded. First of all, we'll make a diagnosis about the feelings and thoughts plaguing your mind. Lie back on the seat, and then we'll start. Leaning on the seat, Rara reposed. Minuet took out the chair from the room, and sat down, and pulled out a notebook and pencil out of her jacket. She removed some of the glass pieces from it. I'd like to start with a simple words test. Just tell me the first word that pops in your head. Understand? Yes. Rara continued looking at the roof as Minuet began the process. Outstanding, important, success, fame, picture, remembrance, precious, soul, change, metamorphosis, par parallel, personality, shadow, mask, instance, Offering... Spectacle. 
In the moment that word was pronounced, the entire room fell into silence. No buzzing or breeze was listened. Minuet, thinking the pop star didn't hear, repeated the word. Spectacle. The silence prevailed for a while. Done. Rara stood up and massaged her head. Sorry to waste your time, but I don't know if this is the correct way. And don't worry, I'll come back to check out on you. In the meantime, though, I'd like you to think about them so we can continue. See you tomorrow. Nice to meet you, Rara. The unicorn stretched her hoof. Rara closed the deal by holding hers. Same to you, Minuet. Wow, that was rushed. You don't want to spend more time with her because you think this is a waste of time, like everything else in your life. How pitiful. This is going so well. The blue unicorn left the room, but as soon as she did, Rara followed her steps to the main entrance unnoticed. There, Coco Pamel and Discord were waiting for the results. Meanwhile, Rara listened to the conversation, hidden. And? Coco asked Minuet, what's the diagnosis? My diagnosis is that she craves for her past. Both the dresser and the producer were astonished, and their pupils expanded. What do you mean? Discord asked. I believe I can manage to put her on the right track, if you can help me. I mean, we made the deal eight hours ago, and she believed it was just a minute ago. But don't put much pressure on her, for now. For now, give her a rest. I'll come back every day to check up on her until the premiere. Thanks, Mr. Discord and Miss Pomel. See you tomorrow. Minuet walked away. Coco frowned and muttered, Stupid bank, stupid city hall, and stupid... Stupid rent check. What was that? Discord asked, looking at her. Nothing. As she observed how her main supporters were heading to the door, Rara sneaked herself until she reached the main stage. She remained there, still under both Discord and Coco arrived. What are you doing here? asked Discord. Oh, I was visualizing how I'm going to appear when the show starts. Rara lied to them. But she had no better excuses for now. Your dress, Coco said, preoccupied. It's all ripped. It was only an accident. But it's your favorite. Coco approached her to check her dress. I can secure it for your big presentation. Don't worry about it. For now, I need my outfit. She then directed to Discord. Listen, Discord. About what happened. Don't worry about it. It was my fault. When you had the chance to repair it, but... With my fingers, and not my magic. And it'll be brighter, like I said. Rara didn't know how to react to the comment. They looked at each other, confused. You had magic all this time and you never told us? Can you imagine how much time we could have saved? I'm trying to develop my manual skills. Let's just quote a friend of mine. He cleared his throat and imitated the voice of his friend the best he could. You are too dependent on your magic. You can't rely on that all the time. You have to learn how to be practical. Because I am not going to be with you forever. So I decided to plan specifically for you. Here's a ticket to Manhattan and 50 bits in case you're hungry. Try to find another hobby that doesn't involve chaos or anything like that. And find a place in the world. Learn how to be useful. And make new friends and remember... That I love you. He finished and face palmed instantly, followed by a deep sigh. Making friends has been difficult to me ever since, and now it's even worse since because she's no longer here to support me. Physically here, I should say, and that was months ago. Sometimes I wonder to myself if the rest of the ponies are ready to accept me because of my nature. Yeah, let's call it that. Even high society have a hard time with me. I accepted your offer job because I thought I could redeem with myself and prove to a question I can be useful in other ways. I just want this to be perfect. Like both of you. You're perfect. No, we aren't, answered Coco. Yes, you are. You just, you seem to be so unconcerned and acquiescent with your life. I mean, sure, we all have our day-to-day -day problems, but we managed to stand up and face them. It's not like our shadow is going to appear right here and manipulate us into forms we never wanted to. 
Discord and Coco chuckled while Rara kept quiet. Instantly, there was an uncomfortable silence. That was nice of your part, said Coco. I guess it's time to go now. It's late. Go ahead, said Rara. I have a couple things to do. Thanks for that, Discord. No problem, Rara. But remember, the owner will close at 10 o'clock. She accompanied her producer and dresser to the entrance. After watching Discord and Coco departing, Rara retired once more to the dressing room, which was still a mess, despite the cleanliness she did previously. While thinking about the method Minuet recommended her before him picking up the main things, the voice came back. What was, it, what was it with all that chit chat? It, do you really care about that freak after what he has done to you? He only wants to fit in, to do something different, to feel relevant, like me. Relevancy is like a plant you have to water every day, you know. Yours must be dried up at this moment. What's that supposed to mean? You tell me, Mrs. Neglected. Could you please stop harassing me? You already know I can't do that. No matter where you go, I'll always be there. Rara closed the door and left Brad away. On the way home, none of the ponies in the street noticed her. Whether it was the low light or a damaged dress, she felt alone. Suddenly her tummy rumbled. She was hungry. To fit in the standards of fame, she must remain slenderly built. But this time, she had overreacted the situation. She hadn't eaten for several days, and water was her only nourishment. At this time, all the restaurants and stores were closed. Not even a food car was in the offing, and her apartment wasn't exactly nearby. It'd be hours before she could taste a flower salad in her mouth. She reposed on the floor next to a garbage can, and hunger was unbearable. Command that these bags become apples to satisfy your hunger. Her eyes observed how one of the bags from the garbage can transformed into a shiny apple, resting on her hooves. Knowing the effects the voice had in her head, she just threw the apple away, stood up, and continued her way home. Ponies shall not live 